I'm here with this incredibly reflective Carvera Air. I realized I didn't shoot an intro to this video, so mind how dirty it is, we've used it a little. Let me just talk about today's sponsor, PCBWay, for a second. I got this desktop CNC machine because I wanna be able to prototype stuff, but if I get my final project, everything works and I'm satisfied with it, I can do it cheaply on this in plastic, then I can send that file off to PCBWay to make it for me in a more durable metal or some other material. Here we are in PCBWay's site. You've got you know your instant quote, CNC 3D printing, PCB assembly. They have product capabilities here listed that show you all the different kinds of PCBs and things they can do. They've got projects here that are shared so you can go in and find things that you might want to do. Thanks PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I really, really do appreciate it. You guys rock. It is a tabletop CNC machine. It's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, let's check it out in the video here. I just unboxed the Carvera Air here and this thing was immaculately packaged. They fit everything they possibly could inside it and nothing was moving like perfect amounts of styrofoam. They gave this a lot of attention when they were thinking about how to package it so that it survived. And then everything's in its own little cardboard box. So I think I have it set up here for their, um, one of the projects that kind of comes with a three axis relief. I'm kind of nervous because I've never done anything like this before, but I, I think I've got it secured pretty well. And I guess we're going to find out. Uh, let me show you. And it looks just like in their video. This is one of the like sample projects it comes with. So apparently I'm supposed to start it now and the laser doodad will do its thing. Um, let me watch the video one more time just to make sure. So here we go, fingers crossed. Please change tool probe, then press confirm or main button to proceed. I do have the probe in, let me make sure it's firm, confirm. Like there's gonna be a learning curve here for me because I've never designed anything in 3D or like generated the G code and stuff, but <clears throat> really looking forward to it like the the you know the options this gives me in addition to 3d printing and all my various lasers and stuff like i'm starting to get a really nice like maker setup here um pretty pretty exciting sorry it keeps blowing out the light there on this resin board Then it has this nice dust collection skirt and this goes to the back and you can, you know, hook up your um, shop vac or whatever, or if you have another suction system. Now it does come default as 230 volt. So you gotta flip that switch if you're, you know, you have 110, 115 or whatever, 120. Um, okay, please change to tool one, then press confirm or main button to proceed. Let me look at the video real quick. I know these are the two tools I'm supposed to use, but I forget which one's first. I think this one on the left is first, but I just wanna check. Okay, yeah, so we're changing to this. It's a 25 millimeter single flute. Um, yeah, whatever, in mill, I guess. So we're just gonna take it, it's right here. We're gonna pull this lever up here and that makes it so we can put the tool in. I'm gonna get down here so I can see. Tool is in. Give it a little tug and make sure it's in there. It is in there. The first bit is done. I definitely need to uh, 3D print an adapter so I can hook up my off-brand shop vac and suck this out. Um, but I'm gonna clean this up real fast and then we'll change the tools once the next tool. We are almost done here. We've been going for just over two hours. It's got about five minutes left. It wants me to change back to tool one. So I'm gonna open up the door. I'm gonna vacuum a little, and then we'll get tool one in there and let it finish and see what this thing looks like. All right, I got the top vacuum. There's still a bunch under here. Let's go ahead and change out this tool. Grab tool one again. 
Well, if I can find it, there we go. We're in there good. There we go. Push the button. And it's saying we have two minutes, 32 seconds to go. I will say for the first 35 to 45%, it was pretty inaccurate, inaccurate. And <clears throat> by the time I got to 50, it was pretty much zeroed in the time preview was. So I'm assuming it's gonna be about two and a half minutes, but we'll let this go ahead and get going. I think it's just gonna um, cut the thing out now, maybe. So yeah, we're here at 99% now. Let's just go ahead and watch this. I'm pretty sure it's just doing the final punch through. I'm not sure what that's about, unless that was the residue from the uh, protective plastic. I'll get in here with some Windex at some point and clean that up, because it's kind of obstructing my camera view. Got less than 500 instructions left, 400. We're in the final 100. All right, looks like it's done. Let me vacuum this out again and uh, we'll take a look. Yeah, so I just manually brought it forward and let's see, where's my tool? And just go ahead and first let's get this out of the way. I'm gonna unscrew some of these a little so I can see what's going on here. From what I can tell, it's looking pretty good. It didn't entirely punch through. I'm not sure if that's on purpose. I think so, because if I remember right, one of these pieces of the kit had a little tiny hacksaw blade. Obviously, you don't want to finish the last piece and send the thing flying, I guess. There we go. We should be able to get that out now. Yep. Oh, yeah. There we go. Let me uh, put this back here so I can sit down. And you can see it. It's got those two little pieces that will just punch out or cut off or whatever. And, yeah, that looks freaking amazing. That's just so cool. Now the hard part of learning how to actually design my own stuff and figure out what tools to use and everything. But it's nice and satisfying that they do come with this little sample here so you can uh, kind of have something to show. Yeah, so that just broke off there pretty easy and then I'll come in here and clean that up later with the hacksaw. But that is, that is amazing. Um, obviously I've seen tons of machine stuff in my life. But the first time I've ever actually done it myself, I guess I need to vacuum it a little bit better up here. There's some dust, but yeah, it just, not a great color for my camera. Just doesn't want to get it. There we go. Get some shadow on there. That's pretty stinking cool. When I filmed the other portion of this, it was Saturday. Today is now Tuesday. And over time here, this has started to get worse. Now, what I think it is, is it's the static charge built from pulling the protective film off. And maybe like it's taking the dust from doing this and it's just slowly capturing it on the walls. Uh, I am going to try to clean that, but kind of weird. Be aware of that. And you can kind of see it's like evenly distributed. So again, it makes me think that's maybe where like the machine pressed the protective film on or something. I don't know. Um, one other complaint I had was for my dust collection, I was trying to use this bootleg shop vac, the vac master. And you don't get an adapter, at least mine didn't come with one. And you also don't get the air assist pump but not a big deal. It's just, you can use any one from like a laser or something and get them pretty cheap on uh, Amazon. So in one of their videos, they had this adapter that they said they were using, but this gets in about that far and then this changes size. So I've tried printing my own thing, but because I can't get my calipers down in there to actually get the diameter of it, I tried, you know, making my own to adapt that. So I saw that one on their YouTube and I was like, cool, so I'll adapt to it, but you don't get a seal at all. And this is just like loose in there. So I'm not really sure. Maybe this is like some kind of standard size for dust collection systems, but yeah. Let's get another project going on here and then we'll go ahead and wrap this video up. I got a lot of learning to do here for designing the files, for figuring out what tools to use for different materials and when to change them. So. After this video, it'll probably be several months until I come back to this because I'm going to have to do a lot of tinkering and a lot of learning and I just don't quite have the time right now. It is mid-April and I finished my degree August 16th, so I'm going to be a little bit busy. Not, not necessarily having the bandwidth to learn this machine, but I look forward to doing that a little here and there. And we'll be back eventually with it. But yeah, let's get another project going. 
All right, here we go. We just push the button again. I've got it all leveled and everything, and I put the right tool in. And now she's going to get to work there. So yeah, it's ready for the tool change. Beeped a few minutes ago, but I was busy. But uh, we're here now. And I remember I just pulled the lever, changed the tool out. We're gonna be switching to this one. Let me get that done and we'll get this going again. So their adapter does kind of work. It's not the greatest, but it definitely kept it clean while it was doing that. Um, here's another thing I don't really like about this. Maybe you can change this in settings, but it doesn't home when it's done. So now like it's just parked over the workpiece. And it's like, now I have to go tell it to home. And it's just like, why, why doesn't it just go home when it's done? Yeah, so. That came out really good. Don't mind the dust and stuff. You'd obviously just uh, blow it off or wipe it off. And I got some fingerprints on here already. But I am very happy with how that came out. And then, of course, if you'd made the base and everything and shown the light through there, then all of the frosted-looking parts would light up. And, you know, you got one of those little cool little lamp things. That's pretty cool. I feel like I'm definitely going to find uses for that because presumably this is just like a vector graphic or something that they put in there. It really looks like a vector graphic. And then you could just machine it out. That might actually be pretty easy for me to figure out how to do because I can just use this as an example. And then I know all of the settings and stuff and the tools. And then I could just do a vector graphic. Yeah, I like that. The Carvera Air little desktop CNC machine. Obviously, there's going to be a strong learning curve for me. I've never done anything like this. And there's going to be that barrier to entry if you're new to this sort of thing. But it works. It was really easy to set up. I didn't really have to do anything. I had to, I had to stick the magnet, just plop it up on there for the skirt, for the dust collection. <laughs> that was pretty much it. You know, you got to get your tools out and set up everything like you would for any workpiece. But other than that, you remove a couple pieces of plastic. It's got really nice foam in it here that keeps everything uh, safe in there during transit. And yeah, um, I'm actually going to put that foam back in it for now just to keep it from getting beaten around in the garage as I put it out there. Because again, it'll be a few months until I have the time to learn how to like design stuff in here and I'll probably start with like the PVC I mean not the PVC sorry the uh, acrylic kind of stuff and I have a bunch of acrylic for my lasers that I can mess around with it'll be kind of cool and then maybe go from there now this will do like non-ferrous metals so I should be able to do um, copper and uh, aluminum and stuff and there could be some interesting things to do there in the future but again I have to like figure out how to do that like maybe put my logo onto, um, you know, just a piece of stock or something. So watch for that video. It's going to be a few months from now. I'm really busy with class. Uh, I've been working on my bachelor's degree for on and off since I was 18. I just turned 40 last month. So <laughs> I want to focus on that one last class, get everything done, make sure I graduate before I go trying to learn a bunch of new stuff. But yeah, I just saw this and I was like, I got to have one of those. And I certainly have everything here that I need. I've got that fourth axis. I've got the UV curing things. That might come in handy. I want to kind of get into some more like uh, circuit kind of stuff on the channel. I do have a course that I crowdfund in a little um, kit kind of deal that I'm going to do. I got a few of the Mark Rober's engineering kits, not the kids ones, but the other ones. And I want to get to those at some point, but I want to finish school up first. And then once I do that, then I want to start tinkering with stuff on here. I've got all this you know, lasers and now CNC and 3D printing. And I want to like try to take a bunch of different skills and put them together. So yeah, look forward to that later this year. Um, if you could, I have a Patreon. The support would be really helpful. I am full time now on YouTube. Kind of scary. <laughs> Any help there would be appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next video. This thing's really cool. Let me know what you would do with it in the comments. Like, I can't even wrap my head around the kind of stuff that I might do with this. So what kind of projects would you do if you had one to like kind of get me in the headspace there? And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.